Hello and welcome to this webinar on digital transformation in MATLAB with predictive maintenance and digital twin. Today I'm going to be talking about the value of predictive maintenance, how it differs from condition monitoring, and how you can use different workflows for predictive maintenance based on the data you have available from your system. First, I'm going to define predictive maintenance by comparing it to other maintenance approaches and some of the shortfalls in each technique. Condition monitoring is the process of observing a parameter or condition in machinery, such as vibration or temperature, so that you can identify a significant change which may indicate a developing fault. Condition monitoring is used in predictive maintenance, but does not predict a future failure or signal actionable events. Reactive maintenance is done when a failure occurs. This is a risky approach since unexpected failures can be very costly and potentially dangerous. Scheduled maintenance is a common approach where maintenance is performed at regular intervals, usually prescribed by the equipment manufacturer. The problem here is that scheduled maintenance may not prevent all failures, and you could be performing maintenance unnecessarily on perfectly healthy equipment. Predictive maintenance is when we forecast problems in the equipment before they arise and schedule maintenance as needed. The problem with predictive maintenance is that it is difficult to implement, and as a relatively new technology, operators often don't know where to start with development of analytics behind it. So what can you do with predictive maintenance? The main aim is to predict and identify issues before failure. But you don't just want to predict that a failure is going to occur and when. You also need to know what part is going to fail so that you can save time and effort by maintaining or replacing only that part. Using machine learning, you can perform root cause analysis to pinpoint the part in your plant which is failing. You can also use machine learning and time to failure information to estimate the remaining useful life of your equipment. From all this information, the end goal is to send out a message or warning to the operators so that they can take action before failure occurs. From performing predictive maintenance, equipment owners can reduce equipment downtime by doing maintenance strategically and being aware of events before they happen, leading to lower maintenance costs. So how do we go about implementing predictive maintenance? Based on the data that we have available, we can decide on an appropriate workflow. In general, the workflow can be data-driven or model-driven. With a data-driven workflow, we only use the sensor data from the plant or equipment to create a predictive algorithm. This will alter slightly depending on if failure information is available or not. When we don't have failure data, we may decide to simulate failure information by creating a digital model of the physical plant and then test multiple scenarios in a safe, low-risk digital environment. First, I'm going to talk a bit more about data-driven methods. The first use case is when we have failure data from our plant flagged with either run-to-failure information or with unexpected failures flagged in our historical database. In this case, we can use a supervised machine learning approach, like a classification algorithm, for identifying when a sensor is in a particular state. In the example here, we have run to failure sensor data from turbofan engines. The data has been flagged to indicate a long, medium, or short time until maintenance needs to occur. A classification algorithm is trained with this data, and the time to maintenance is set as the output. In production, this system would generate a warning for an operator when there is a medium duration until failure, or an alert when sensor data indicates a short time until failure. The problem with this approach is that it is not often practical to run a system until failure. When we perform scheduled maintenance at a regular rate, 
we may not have access to failure data. In this case, we can use an unsupervised learning clustering approach on the data together with insights from our maintenance crews. In this example, on the same turbofan data, we can use different visualization methods to try and understand what is happening. If we plot the starting and ending points for each engine over time, we can see an overall shift to the right in the positions of the points. The maintenance crew knows which engines were in need of maintenance at the time of service and which engines could have run for longer. If we look at an engine which was in need of maintenance, we can trace its sensor data behavior for the duration of its run and see that the ending point of a bad engine is far out from the main cluster of functional engines. From this information, we can set up boundaries for our data and create a warning system from where a data point becomes clustered. When we have no failure data, we can also choose to use a model-driven workflow. For this, we have a physical plant with sensors linked to the Internet of Things. The sensor data is stored in a database or historian. From the sensor information, we can build a digital model which simulates the physical plant using methods like system identification. Using a digital twin in conjunction with the physical plant will give us a good idea of how accurate our model is to the point where we can use the digital twin to view the real-time status and current working condition of the plant. Once we have a digital model, we can simulate failure events in the model and gather the data that is generated for different scenarios. It is this data which will be used for training a predictive model. So first we start with sensor data, which we use to build a digital twin, as well as perform analysis on the data. From our digital twin and data analytics, we can gather data for different failure scenarios, which we use as the data for our predictive algorithm. We then develop the predictive model, and once we are satisfied with its performance, we can deploy it. This should be seen as an iterative process, where we use real event data from the plant to retrain our algorithm and update our digital twin accordingly. The example I'm going to show is with the digital model of a triplex pump built in Simulink. I'm going to go into MATLAB and Simulink to show you the model. This is the Simulink model of the digital twin system. Over here you can see that I have a motor driving my pump. I have different pressure inlets coming into my pump with different fluids driving in. If I look into the pump, I can see what is happening beneath my system. This entire model is built using Simscape Multibody which is a physical modeling environment within Simulink. And here you can see the physical model of each plunger. Over here, these indicators show what the current condition of my model is. I've pre-run this model for the sake of time and at the moment, I don't have any faults in the system. What I'm going to show you first is how I collected the data for use in MATLAB. Over here is a script where we collect the data from the pumps, the measurement data from the pumps, and save it to CSV files. We then use a data store to pull that data in. This script also performs pre-processing on the data. Over here, you can see a plot of the raw data. Below, we've done further analytics 
to remove noise in the data and fill in missing values. So at the end of the day, we have a processed set of data which we can use for our predictive algorithm. In the next script, I'm using the false data as a time series and using it to create my predictive maintenance algorithm. Over here, I'm plotting the fault progression data so that you can see the way that our data changes from normal operation as the fault continues to occur. When I view this in the frequency domain, I can see certain peaks. I'm going to use these peaks to train my predictive maintenance algorithm. They can be seen as features in my dataset. Over here, I've decided to use a boosted tree as my classifier. When I run the classifier, choosing a particular fault, and then run it through with the predictor, I can see that my prediction and my actual fault are the same. They're both a leak in the first plunger. Now I'm just going to show a simple animation of what is happening in the pump. This is shown if I decide to use the Mechanics Explorer when working with a multi-body model. You can see how the model reacts throughout the simulation. If I go back into my Simulink model, I'm now going to add in a fault condition. I have this menu with different options available to change the parameters in my pump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a seal link and block the inlet for the first plunger. When I apply these faults, my diagram updates so that I can see what those faults are. I'm also going to update the model so that these faults show in my Mechanics Explorer as well. So here I can see that I have the blocked inlet and the seal leak. When I run my model, I want to see on these indicators whether my model can correctly predict where the fault occurs. Here I can see that it has correctly identified that we have a blocked inlet and a seal leak. In summary, I have shown how system downtime can be prevented by sending sensor data to a predictive maintenance algorithm, created using a digital twin, and machine learning in MATLAB. Thank you for listening to this webinar. To find out more about how to use predictive maintenance or digital twins in your digital transformation strategy, visit our Industry 4.0 competency page in the link below the video, or contact us about a feasibility study for predictive analytics in your system.